Of all the tragedies that have taken place in sporting arenas, one of the most ignominious would have to be the Heisel Stadium disaster of the 29th of May, 1985. This is for the simple reason that it was triggered not by an accident or an act of God, but by hooliganism. The occasion was the final of the European Cup. England's powerhouse team, Liverpool Football Club, were to play the top Italian team, Juventus, at the ageing Heisel Stadium in Brussels. With around 60,000 fans in attendance, the ground had been cordoned off to keep the fans of the opposing team separate. One section, however, had been reserved for neutral supporters, and with the tickets acquired by travel agents and touts, this resulted in a number of Juventus fans finding themselves in close proximity to their sworn enemies. With just a flimsy fence dividing them, the Liverpool supporters rushed the barrier an hour before kickoff. As the Juventus supporters scrambled to get away, they backed into a crumbling wall, which collapsed, killing 39 people and injuring hundreds more. There is confusion about whether the organisers and players knew exactly what had happened, but it was decided to continue with the game anyway to prevent further disturbances. Juventus won 1-0, thanks to a penalty by Michel Platini. After the match, policing and stadium concerns were ignored, with Liverpool receiving all the blame. The club was banned indefinitely from European competition, as were all other English clubs. The ban lasted for five years. This is the capital city of the Republic of Macedonia, which sits on the Vara River. In 1963, while it was still part of President Tito's Socialist Federal Republic of Yugoslavia, the city was hit not for the first time by a massive earthquake. It had already been nearly wiped out in 518 AD and again at the end of the 11th century. This time, the first tremor was felt at 5 a.m. on the morning of the 26th of July. It measured 6.1 on the Richter scale and killed more than 1,000 people. 80% of the city was destroyed and 120,000 citizens lost their homes. At the time, the population was only around 200,000 in total. Rescue teams from across Yugoslavia were swiftly mobilized, and a significant international relief front meant that the city was quickly rebuilt. But many historical and cultural monuments were lost forever, as were elements of the city's Ottoman heritage. Today, next to a museum, the ruins of the old train station still stand, turned into a memorial for those that lost their lives in the quake. Saddam Hussein was by no means the first despot in Iraqi history. Baghdad's military past features a long line of dictators, coups and counter-coups. One of the bloodiest took place on the 8th of February 1963. It was a coup d'etat, orchestrated by the Ba'athist party, which included Saddam, to topple President Abdul Karim Qasim. In the fighting, 5,000 Iraqis were killed, with the Ba'athists numbering their own losses at 80. The motivation for overthrowing Qasim was suspected to be pan-Arabist influence and state control over oil. It was carried out with the backing of the American CIA and the British government and resulted in a house-to-house -house hunt for members of the Communist Party. Ironically, Qasim himself had come to power only five years earlier in another coup. On the 14th of July 1958, he and his adherents had seized military control over the Iraqi capital, overthrowing the monarchy and executing several members of the royal family. By 1963, he had withdrawn the country from the pro-Western Baghdad Pact, lifted the ban on the Communist Party, and established relationships with the Soviet Union. Moves like seizing 98% of Iraqi land from the British-owned Iraq Petroleum Company served to increase Western hostility. The CIA was so keen to see him removed, it joined forces with a small but militant Ba'athist Party to plot Qasim's downfall. Foreshadowing Saddam Hussein's own demise 43 years later, Qasim was executed after a show trial on the 9th of February, 1963.